and our next example is the same thing uh, whatever we did in the previous one that is revolute and prismatic but it is a non intersecting uh, planar arms what is the non intersecting planar arms that means the axis of the revolute and as well as the prismatic are uh, non intersecting okay so here um, <coughs> first thing that we need to identify are coordinate uh, coordinate axis so this is the link one see this is a fixed joint this is a fixed joint and uh, this is the link one so these two are uh, connected with a revolute joint and uh, this is the link two and uh, this is the link one and this is a rotating i mean the sorry this is a translating like this here in this case it is a perpendicular okay so this is the link one so that uh, we will get the z1 here okay and uh, this is the link two is going in this direction and uh, this is the joint two so along the joint two you will get the z2 so we identified it z1 and z2 and uh, <coughs> so what is the coordinate system for the fixed one since these two are uh, the fixed one and the first link are joined by a revolute joint then we will choose the coordinate axis in a such a way that both are coincident that means here i will choose the z naught along the z1 see here the z1 and z naught are perpendicular to the plane because it is a revolute perpendicular to the plane and uh, i will consider you know x naught like this and uh, z naught is uh, z naught is this x naught is this so y naught is uh, on this plane this is a y naught okay so now i need to find out the x1 so x1 is between z1 comma z2 z1 comma z2 so here this is a z1 and this is a z2 the perpendicular distance from here to here so it is going along this x1 is along this line like this you see the x1 it is going from here around this line okay and uh, now we need to find out the x2 x2 is perpendicular distance between uh, z2 and uh, z3 but here we have z2 there is no z3 so i here i need to choose the z3 so generally how we choose the z3 how we choose the z3 z3 is for the end effector or the tool okay so it is either end effector or tool so i will choose the coordinate uh, coordinate axis of the tool here such that z3 also coincide with the z2 z3 and z2 are coincide and when z2 and z3 are known here then x x2 is a perpendicular to these two okay so here i will take perpendicular to z2 and z3 so i will take perpendicular something like this then it will be x x2 so here we if you observe x2 and x1 are both are you know parallel parallel and what is the variable prismatic variable here that is the d here okay let's say this is the d2 why because it is related to the link 2 so this is moving this is a variable it is not constant it will move prismatic joint okay so <coughs> identification of coordinate system is over now we need to write the dh parameters so dh parameters so first one is a link and then alpha i minus 1 a i minus 1 d i and then theta i okay so how many links are there there are only two links here and we need to find out you know one by one here so here alpha i minus 1 is the angle between z i minus 1 and z i and it is along the x i minus 1 okay so for example here if i substitute i equal to 1 then it will become alpha naught alpha naught is the angle between z naught and z1 and along the 
axis x naught and uh, alpha if i substitute i equal to 2 then it will become alpha 1 and it is a uh, angle between z1 and uh, z2 along the x1 so here where is the z naught and z1 this is the z naught and z1 and angle between these two is zero here and uh, what is where is the z1 and z2 here z1 is perpendicular to the plane z1 is perpendicular to the plane and z2 is in this direction okay so the, the angle between these two is you know perpendicular this is away from the plane and it is on the plane we both are perpendicular but here I, I, I would like to see I would like to see the orientation see for example if I am you know it is along the x1 okay so this is uh, along the x1 so when i am uh, you know doing like this then what is happening see for example i will transfer this uh, z2 to here i transferred z2 to here this is a z1 so z1 to z2 when i am doing like this 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 finger is uh, this uh, thumb is uh, pointing in the opposite direction of x1 that i have chosen that is why you know always you use the right hand thumb rule you know without using the right hand thumb rule don't write directly the angles so i transferred z2 here and z1 is this so when i am right when i am turning the angle from z1 to z2 order is important not z2 to z1 z1 to z2 then this thumb it should indicate the x1 direction but here in this case it is indicating in the reverse direction so that we will get the negative value here that means here minus pi by 2 here okay that is what we need to do here and here we need to find out the a i i minus 1 a i minus 1 is a distance between z i minus 1 and z i along the x i minus 1 so here if i substitute i equal to 1 and i equal to 2 then a naught a naught is a distance between z naught and z1 so z naught and z1 the distance is 0 and a1 is the distance between z1 and z2 z1 is here and z2 is here let's say the distance from here to here is something like l1 okay so what is the distance between these two that is the l1 and d1 again di is a distance between x i minus 1 comma x i along the z i z i okay previously it is along the x i minus 1 so d1 and then d2 d1 is a uh, d1 is you know a distance between x naught comma x1 and it is a distance between x1 comma x2 so what is the distance between x1 x naught comma x1 that is a 0 and here what is the distance between x1 and x2 this is a x1 and this is x2 it is a varying always okay that is a equivalent to d2 and here we need to find out the theta theta is the angle between x uh, x i minus 1 to the x i along the about the axis z i so here theta 1 and theta 2 so theta 1 is the angle between x naught and x1 here this this is not fixed because it is a revolute joint it is always you know changes its position x1 di yeah, direction um, yeah, orientation yeah, with respect to x naught so the angle between these two is theta 1 and the angle between z1 and x1 and x2 is always 0 why because those are parallel okay because it is a prismatic joint even without thinking all this you can easily assume everything so now we need to find out the transformation uh, um, matrix position so here uh, see tool is nothing but uh, you know so the link to here why the x2 is fixed at the end of the end effector and it already captured the length of the link to so you no need to consider again tool separately so first we need to write the t 
in uh, t 0 to 1 t 0 to 1 here everything is 0 only we have uh, one rotation that is uh, about the z axis so when you have only one rotation about the z x axis then it is only c c1 minus s1 0 0 s1 c1 0 0 because there is no translation 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 okay this is the transformation matrix and uh, here what is the transformation matrix for the uh, what is the transformation matrix for the 1 to 2 1 to 2 that is the second one and here if you observe you have uh, three non-zero values and uh, always always we need to consider that you know always you can write straight away whatever i have written here i always you can straight away write only this you know this x this alpha i, I, I minus 1 and uh, a i minus 1 is related to the link i minus 1 and uh, di and theta i are uh, related to the link link i okay so you cannot uh, write everything directly in the same transformation matrix that i am writing previously so instead you can uh, write you can substitute the matrix final matrix that i derived you know for the i minus 1 to i or you can write in this manner also i will write i will write this uh, these two combined why because these two are related to the link i minus 1 so here what is happening there is a rotation about the x axis and a translation along the x axis whenever there is a rotation about the x axis then it is here 1 0 0 and there is a translation along the x axis that is a l1 and here it will become 0 0 and uh, this is a 0 and here cos cos minus 90 that is a 0 here a sign minus a sign 90 minus minus it will become plus and here minus 1 here a 0 0 0 and here there is a no uh, translation and here also there is no translation see i am considering only the link i minus 1 now i need to multiply this with the link link z so for the link z we don't have any rotation but only there is a or a translation along the z axis so in that case i will uh, write the only identity matrix here and uh, 0 0 1 and here d2 and uh, again here 0 0 0 1 okay this is the matrix and uh, if i multiply these two the final matrix uh, you know always you better write like this otherwise it may lead to some mistakes so here it will become 1 and uh, the second element is uh, 0 and here also 0 and here it is a uh, L1 and here it is a uh, 0 and then uh, 0 1 and then uh, D2 here it will become uh, 0 minus 1 and um, 0 0 and here it will become 0 0 0 1 okay finally this is what we got okay so that is what i'm i uh, know writing see here how i wrote this equation because both belongs to the same link i have written the rotational matrix and uh, the translation vector here so here in the same same matrix if you tempted to write the translation for the link 2 then what happens you will get a you will get here d2 instead of getting d2 here in the you know y position you will get d2 in the z position that you need to observe that is why these two you cannot write in the same transformation matrix these are x is different or z is different okay so you need to write differently and uh, multiply it otherwise if you can uh, recollect that formula that we derived it formula means the final matrix then you can directly substitute in that so now we need to multiply these two you know this with this then again i will divide this into compartments for the sake of convenience then here i am writing t 0 to 2 t 0 to 2 so what is the first component first component will come here and then write the first component here 
no here is a c1 and uh, the second component is a zero and uh, the third component is a minus s1 and uh, and the and the fourth component is a here The, we are multiplying this with this okay so the fourth component is a c1 l1 c1 l1 minus d2 s1 okay this and then i am multiplying this with the every column here then it will become i will write like this so that you can see s1 this and uh, this row with uh, this column that is a zero and uh, this row with uh, this column that is only c1 and uh, this row with the uh, last column then you will get a uh, l1 s1 plus uh, here l1 s1 plus uh, d2 c1 okay the third row third row is uh, this is a uh, zero this is a uh, minus one and again zero and here also zero okay z component that is obvious from the diagram and here you will get only zero 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 one zero 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 one okay this is the final one so from this what is the x x is a uh, c1 l1 minus uh, d2 s1 y is a l1 s1 plus d2 c1 okay